Hey everybody, Wake Up America 8 from Twitter here, or as you may know me now as uh, Conscious Awareness is my screen name. <coughs> I wanted to kind <coughs> of take a minute to talk about time with you guys because it, it's it's a big deal right now as you're, as you're probably aware. Today is December 12th of the year 2012, or as many people are calling it, 12-12-12. Obviously, having consecutive numerical uh, day, month, year doesn't happen very often. It, it's extremely rare, and so it's it's being touted as a major, significant event in human awareness. Um, from my perspective, though, I I don't really see it as anything more than a day on our calendar because quite frankly we're working on a an understanding of time the passage of time completely created by us for the use by us as us being human human beings and it it's totally based on our own personal as a species perception and acceptance of passage of time. Um, it first occurred to me, I think, when I was maybe 11, 12, uh, not much younger, not much older. Uh, I was very young, and that time is nothing but perception. It's all relative to how you experience or how you move through space. And I kind of explain in, in a brief thing here how I came to that conclusion. I used to be really big into animals. I still am. I'm very interested in animals. Go outside, take in strays all the time. Animals are great. Uh, so my mother uh, was fantastic to me. Uh, still is. So I can't say was. But she would get me zoo books, which I would say are, are some of the best by far magazines for kids because uh, if you have any interest in animals and how they do things and how they operate and what they are, zoo books is the way to go. And I have a massive collection of zoo books at home, at my mother's house I should say. This is home. Um, so I was, I was learning a lot about animals and how they worked and, you know, what their heart rates were, what their lifespan, expected lifespans were. And I, I found a little pattern where the lifespan of an animal, the, ex, the life expectancy, I should say, of an animal's natural life, including humans, because we are animals, um, is directly linked to how they travel through time. If it's slow, if they travel, I'm, I'm sorry, travel through space, if they travel through space slowly, they tend to age much more slowly. And if they travel through space quickly, they tend to age much more quickly. But then you get into things like if an astronaut is on this on the uh, International Space Station the Mir for a considerable length of time they would actually return to the planet eventually of course being younger than they should have been had they been on the planet the whole time and what that means is the the faster that you travel through space towards the speed of light, the slower you perceive the passage of time. And if you perceive the passage of time as slower than the rest of us, you're going to age slower than the rest of us because time's not aging you like the rest of us. For example, if you were to actually uh, eject yourself from our atmosphere into space and somehow survive out there for a length of time. A length of time, just a 
<laughs> I can't get away from that word, even if I'm trying to explain how it doesn't exist. Uh, if you're if you can eject yourself into the into the outer space, just outside Earth's atmosphere, and survive there long enough. And if you completely, if you have a way to completely stop yourself from moving, in other words, we're traveling on a planet that is spinning in a solar system that it is orbiting around, around our sun, our star, inside of a galaxy that is spinning which is also traveling, the whole galaxy is traveling through space at an unimaginable rate. So even though I am sitting motionless on my couch right now talking to you, I am traveling as are you at an unimaginable rate through space right now. So if you were able to somehow eject yourself into space and completely stop moving. In other words, you stop rotating with the planet, you stop rotating with the planet's orbit around the sun, you stop rotating with the galaxy, the Milky Way, and then you stop traveling with the galaxy, the Milky Way, through space itself. Time would literally stop affecting you. <coughs> and this is one of the arguments for for time travel into the future because if you were to do something like that and then <clears throat> excuse me at the very least um, stay with stay within the galaxy like spin with the galaxy travel with the galaxy but get away from the earth and and the earth is flying around the milky way if you were to wait there until the Earth makes its full rotation and our galaxy rotates around the Milky Way and you would jump back into the Earth once it gets next to you again, uh, you would have traveled millions of years into the future from your perspective because the passage of time would have slowed down from your perspective on yourself to a crawl compared to what we are experiencing here on Earth. So as time passes on the Earth at a rapid rate, you're experiencing a much slower rate, so when you get back on the Earth, like I said, millions of years would have passed relative to you. So, in other words, what I'm trying to get at here is don't get too worked up over 12, 12, 12. I hope it's a great day for you. I hope you experience complete awareness. I hope you, you wake up. I hope everything that everybody's talking about happens to you. I truly do because I want that to happen to everybody. Uh, I want it to happen to myself, as a matter of fact. Uh, I, I don't think that I'm completely woken up yet. I'm, I'm aware of many things, but not completely. So... I hope that it happens, but I wouldn't really expect it. I wouldn't really get down if it doesn't happen because there's no reason why it should. This is simply a date on a calendar that we created to measure the passage of time from our human perspective. Much love. Have a great day. Hope your 12-12-12 is fantastic. Bye.